Incidentally, we will talk about SMR. Okay, are we ready? Start. So, what is this? What is SMR? Anybody in this audience knows what is SMR? Huh? What do you understand by standardized? So SMR is standardized standardized mortality ratio. So what do you understand by standardized mortality ratio? Sachin, what do you feel? What is the meaning of standard? And there's a number here that went away, 1.32. So what does this uh, mean? What do you feel? Anybody? So let hands up and ask. You want to answer? Yeah, tell me. Uh, okay, observed deaths, huh? observed deaths or actual deaths you could say, huh? divided by ex, uh, expected number of deaths. <coughs> so logically if this is more than 1, what does it, if this is equal to 1, what does it mean? Logically. Okay. We thought this much is going to die, this much I died. Huh? When you say uh, less than one, what does it mean? We actually want, had more people that supposed to die, huh? but lesser have died. That means the survival is better. This is what it tells, right? When it's more than one, what does it mean? So what we had expected more than that have died. So it, it appears that uh, the ICU is probably not doing well. Sir, so, 10 by 10 is actually 10 by 10. So, the so, 10 by 12, but the this has come 1 by 3. I explained to you. Okay. So, um, it's, it's a bit ulta, like I mean 12 by 10. Most of it 12 by 10. Okay. It's 12 by 10. Okay. So, now anything about this, anything that after looking at these words that I mentioned, standardized model ratio, why do you need it in the first place? Why do you need this in the first place? Why do you need to, why don't we just take group death rate? Ki group death rate means it's a dozen one way. Okay. You say it is a quality indicator of the ICU. You are thinking that this is a quality indicator in the ICU. Now, so let me explain to you this now. Okay, you have an ICU, you have an ICU that has got geriatric patients. So it's a geriatric ICU. So many places in the world have got geriatric ICUs. Or there is a uh, uh, and, and you have another ICU that is a pediatric ICU. Now, pediatric ICU PA patients they do very well because the children they've got reserve, they come out, chance of death are very less. One death happens and there's a lot, lot of issue happening. They have a high chance, of, or you take a, 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 a pregnancy ICU, uh, an LSCS ICU. Those patients have got good reserve. Those ladies come out very well, isn't it? Pregnancy patients. Hmm? Now, if I say that this patient may if I say in my geriatric ICU, in my geriatric ICU, out of 10 patients, 7 have died. And now I say in my pediatric or my pregnancy ICU, out of 10, only 1 has died. Does this mean that this ICU is better than this ICU? No. Why it doesn't mean? Expectation is more. Yeah. 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 So you know by, by logical thinking that this geriatric ICU patient. Uh, the ICU patients are going to die more, no? they are old, 90, 95 years old, so they are going to die, right? Whereas these patients are not going to die. So how do I standardize this? How do I standardize this? How do, if I have to say, I have uh, one ICU here, another ICU nation at hospital, if they have got something like this and I have got something like this, but my case mix is different. My case mix is different. So I can't say, Udha jada log marta hai, then come look, uh, and my, that is why my ICU is better. My case mix is different. You understanding? My case mix is different. Similarly, in one hospital only, there will be four different ICUs. A pediatric ICU, a, a medical ICU, a surgical ICU. A surgical ICU will not die as much as a medical ICU. A medical ICU, a pediatric ICU will not die even more lesser than a pediatric or a surgical ICU. You, you understand? A pediatric ICU would be much higher than Then you can't say that pediatric <coughs> ICU is better than uh, uh, surgical ICU is better than medical ICU. We can't say that. We have to standardize it. In order to standardize it, we have to use something called as standardized mortality ratio. Understand it? Now, how do I calculate this? How do I calculate this? So, to calculate, so that so not only is this in my ICU, it's also a comparison from other ICUs. So, if I want to figure out, okay, I have got that ICU there, and I want to figure out why they are having a good. Now, once I have this denominator of SMR, I will start figuring out, okay, what are you doing that is helping your patients? 
So the comparison becomes easy, the effects of how to treat these patients become easy, the discussion becomes better. That's why we want to standardize, that is very clear. Vishal Saman ma'am, you understood this? Huh? So uh, you can never say in one hospital also that that ICU is better than this ICU based on SMR because we're based on just normal mortality, based on uh, 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 patient mix. And that's why unless you do a standardized mortality rate, you will not know this. Clear? So how do we standardize this? So to standardize this, this is a simple thing. Observed actual death. This is simple. Thus, itne jan 88 patients admit the, two mar gaye. Ya 10 mar gaye, jo bhi hai. So ye to idhar simple hai. Ye milna bahut simple hai. This is very simple. However, to get expected number of deaths, expected number of deaths, how do you get this? We we'll get it to an Apache score. Okay, we can get it to any scoring system. It may be Apache, it may be SOFA, it may be any of Muse, it may be any, any of the scoring systems, NQFS scoring system, NQS scoring system, what are the scoring systems here? Apache itself has 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so you may take any of the Apache scorings and in the Apache scoring, there is an expected mortality based on the score. There is an expected mortality based on the score. There is an expected mortality. So, if I have say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 patients, okay, one with Apache of 12, one with Apache of 18, one with Apache of 20, one with Apache of 21, they will have an expected mortality percentage. Mortality, 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 mortality. You add up all these things. When you add up all these things, the end result over here will be put over here. You understand it? Hmm? You add up all these things. Okay, and the end result will come in over here. That is an expected mortality. So now your observed mortality versus your expected mortality ratio you are getting now. Clear? What is the problem? The problem over here is if by any chance you don't do the Apache well, if you don't do the Apache well and you say just assume it to be whatever 5, 6, 7, huh, then the expected mortality will reduce. So how do you find the so there is a, so there is an excel sheet that we have created there is an excel sheet that we have created so when you put an apache score at the end of the month that apache score is taken inserted into the excel sheet and that gives you this percentage it is a mathematical calculation so we know that at apache 12 the mortality is 20% or 16% we know at, at between 18 to 24 the mortality is some percentage from 24 to 30 the mortality is some percentage we know that that is known from previous studies Okay, and what we have done is we have created an Excel sheet which in which you don't have to you don't have to calculate this part. You just put the uh, Apache scores and you will get the expected mortality in percentages. So 18% of the point 88 is a very good. So now, and then we will add this. Yes, we will add this. Yes, we will add this. We will a number. Okay, that number will come here. It's number. Oh, it's a number. So number here, number here. Number of patients, number of patients here. That is how the answer comes but in. This percentage, but it is a number, it is a number of patients that will die. Expected mortality is too many number of patients. Out of this patient, 0.8 percent of this will die. You understand? Number, number. It's in, it's in digits, it's in decibels because it's percentage. So, but score so, uh, expected score. Expected score. We have an Excel sheet. We have created an Excel sheet. What you do over there is today you, you have a patient uh, you have got say so uh, patient A, patient A ka Apache score enter kar do uspe. 15, patient B ka Apache score enter kar do, 16, so much do, 12, enter jibhi karo ge, to uske saath expected mortality aayega, and expected mortality ko tum add karo ge, to end with mark pas result aayega. Simple? Simple? So with that, we are able to calculate your SMR. Clear with this? With that, you, you see the Excel sheet, uh, I have shared it with, uh, with Rashmi and Smita. So have a look at it. Okay, so that's how you calculate the standard. So what happens over here? The problem over here that tomorrow, if you do not calculate your Apache scores well, if you don't get Apache scores well, the percentages here will reflect on the lower side. Means that this patient is not supposed to die, Aiga, and this denominator will become small. And when this denominator goes small, your SMR will go more than one. And if it goes more than one, what will we start thinking? That oh my, this patient shouldn't have died. Are you understanding? You understanding? Huh? One problem with this, this scoring system like this is also the fact that age is not calculated here. 
Age is a very small denominator, but we know age is a big problem. So if you have a case fix on one on on one uh, particular uh, uh, you know uh, in one particular month, for example, three months we are doing Apache scores, and Apache scores of all these patients are 40, 90, 80, 90, 20, and all of them are more than 80 years old. All of them are more than 80 years old. You know, the, though though the Apache seems to be lesser, the expected mortality may change. There may be problems, so that, that is a problem with this particular method. There is a problem with this particular method. So it doesn't calculate everything together. It also doesn't calculate mixed and surgical populations also that well. So there is a problem in calculating this. Are you understanding? But this is so that that means to actually get this answer whether this is significant or not, sister. This is the next part of the story which you must understand. Okay. Now, now that we got a number, now you understood how the number is generated. You understood how the standardized mortality ratio number is generated. You understood that. Now, the, now the question that comes is, now the question that comes is, is this number significant? We are thinking that the answers are uh, one less than one or more than one. This is too simplistic to understand. This is too simplistic to understand. As you know, as people who are actually calculating SMR, we should now figure out whether my number is significant. And in statistics, there is something called as confidence interval. In statistics, there is something called as confidence interval. What does the confidence interval mean? That I can say with confidence that this number is significant. That this number is right. I can say with confidence. Clear on this? I can say with confidence that this number is right. Huh? That is what is the confidence in, uh, meaning of confidence interval. So how do you proceed in this further? You proceed in this further by actually taking the square root of the observed death rate divided by the expected death rate. You do something like this. Huh? You do something like this. And then whatever number you get over here, you multiply this by 1.24. Okay. If this uh, number is between is between 1, uh, around 1, okay, that means it is significant. You get you get 1.24 over here. You get an error here. This is this is called SMR, standard modern ratio error. You get a number here. It be 0.2 or 0.3 or something. You get here. Much more I'm going back. Okay, starting to starting. What we did, we first got observed mortality. So we got a number here. This was say 1.3 in our case. We got 1.3 in our case. Ah, sister. So now this is very important. Then what you do? You do observed mortality. Square root divided by expected mortality. Another calculation that needs to be done in these patients. Okay, and after you do this, you will get a you will get some figure here. That figure may be 0 0.6 or something like that will come. I don't know, something may come here. Right? Huh? You multiply with this formula 1.24 into this. Huh? You multiply this formula 1.2 by into this, you will get a number here. That number you have to add to this number. Yeah, so you will so you will add and you will subtract. So if I have 0.2, if I have 0.2 as my number that I am getting here, so it will be 1.1 to 1.5. But what I am going to see is 1 included in this range. 1 is not included, 1 is before this. You understand? Clear on this? So this becomes now. <coughs> That means this 1.32 is significant. This is the complete SMR. If somebody asks you how to do the SMR, I have to not only calculate the SMR, I have also to calculate the significance of that number. And to find the significance of the number, I need to know the error. And how do I know the error? This is how I know the error. And that is how I put my confidence intervals. So, I have to do this number 1.3 or 0.8 zero point eight to one point five. Now it is in one. Not considered to be significant. So when I add these two, point six add to this two or one point three two or whatever I add, I get one number this side, one number that side. Is it including one that is what you see? That is what is called as standardized mortality ratio. So I'm not one point three two karke, it is not good. We'll have to actually do it. Why why is this important? Why is this important? Because why, is, why to do this is important. Now, why are you doing after one minus one minus one zero one? Why is why am I irritating you with all these calculations? Why? There's a reason for this. 
So whenever you plot a significance, there is something called funnel plot. This is important for all IDCC and candidates, okay? IFCCM actually, not IDCCM. But for understanding a uh, study, you must understand there's something called funnel plot. So if you've seen my JPEN study, we have put a funnel plot there. What is the plot there? The plot is something like this. This is how a funnel looks. This is how a funnel looks. And when I say confidence intervals, there will be a segment when you actually plot it on statistics, you will get one dotted line that comes like this. Now what is this? This is 99% confidence interval. This is 95% confidence interval. Plus or minus. This is plus, this is minus. Okay. When will I say my everything is significant? Huh? That if I so I have I am putting my patient in the SMR somewhere. The SMR is coming here, SMR is coming here, SMR coming here. This is okay. 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 Now my if my if my SMR comes somewhere here, in this ICU is not uh, not okay. The lower the number of patients, the lower the number of patients, the more you'll be on this side of the funnel. That means it cannot be significant. So tomorrow if you are going to do this calculation with 40 patients, you may be somewhere here and the result may not be significant. If you are taking 100 patients, 150 patients, you may be here where the result becomes significant. So that's why you must know your error that you may generate with any kind of calculation. Because at the end of the day, it is expected. It's not something that is sure. It's expected. So whenever there is something that you are proposing or you are expecting or you are thinking it is going to occur that way, there is going to be an error. Okay, and that error you have to iron out. And to iron out that error, you need to do that square root method. This I have just explained directorially how it looks. The lower the cases, the more you are on this side, your chances of being up on these sides are very high. The number higher the number case this way. So where am I? I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I don't know. To know where I am in this area, I actually need to do standard uh, standardized error. And that is what is the error calculation I talked to you about. Clear? Confidence intervals. Where I can say with confidence that okay, my result is significant. So it doesn't end by doing SMR system. If you ask me. It has to be done like this. Huh? Clear? Hmm? Any any doubts on SMR? Simple. Less than one, equal to one, more than one. It is simple for you. Okay, but you must, uh, uh, and you don't need to do anything more than that. You just, just, just need to know how we calculated that. We calculated how we have calculated how we have observed it, how we have observed it, how we have calculated it for the nurses. But for the doctors, you have to be understanding whether this is significant or not. And to understand the significance, you need to know the error. That error is how we calculate in SMR. Clear? Any doubts here? Any doubts? You understood why you have to do the standardized mortality ratio? You've understood what is the benefits of doing it. You've understood what are the policies of doing it. You've understood why you have to calculate an error. And, and you can, you have understood, you know, on a whole, entirely about SMR. SMR is a, is a topic. Okay. 